Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another Our Town Community Show. We promised it, we talked about it, and we delivered a part two with your friend and mine, Ryan Lachia. So Man. Ryan and Ryan. <laughs> Ryan and Ryan. It's, it's after popular demand and uh, <laughs> going viral. What did we? What, what could we say? But yes. So that's that's where we are. The, we're working on our newest business, Ryan and Ryan. Yeah. Um, now that's on our to-do list. So our wives wouldn't like that. So no. that was a joke, wives. <laughs> but uh, today, you know, we talked about it. You know, and everybody, I want you to go back if you didn't see the last show. Go yeah. back. We talked about a lot of stuff. But Ryan, in ter- terms of going deeper in this part two episode. You do a lot of different things for a living and, and you're a consultant and you do things, you have different businesses. What do you see, you know, or have you heard recently about people settling for jobs and, and then maybe an employer's up there going, I need some good people. Mm-hmm. I mean, what the heck is going on? I mean, what do you see? There's like this weird dynamic of like people who are fed up and tired, maybe have like a bad employer or a bad workplace, or maybe you're the right person in the wrong place, mm-hmm. you know, just a lot of different things. And they're too afraid to even look. Yeah. Like I'll be talking to people and they'll say, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm so stressed out at work all the time, whatever. And I'm like, well, where are you looking? Where are you interviewing? And they're like, I'm not. And so, you know, I try to encourage them. I'm like, listen, you're in control of your situation. This is Georgia's like an, uh, like you can. You can, you can almost name your price. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's crazy. a sign on every, every business. Everyone's hiring. So, so. I mean, and I know we'd be speculating. I've been watching a uh, Lincoln lawyer show, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking mm-hmm. about a courtroom, right? Sorry, speculation overturned, sorry. Um, but no, in all seriousness, um, what do you think keeps some people is that they don't have, they don't feel they're worth looking or they just don't, have never put the thought into thinking of something else? I have seriously tried to figure this out. I think it's a uh, fear of change, yeah. fear of the unknown, um, you know, things like that. And then vice versa, you got employers who are hanging on to bad employees, making the experience for others horrible, thinking that they can't find somebody. But, you know, even if it's your top performer, if they're ruining the environment and killing the mood for everybody, like there's so many good people. I just found two excellent people within the last two days. I was just telling you, so blessed. Um, and, And like, if you keep finding yourself hiring the wrong people, maybe it's the strategy, maybe it's the process. So evaluating that. You know, in, in my consulting work, I've seen and gone into, uh, usually obviously you're called in to help fix things. Mm-hmm. So hence you're walking to a culture that I quickly listen a lot and observe a lot. And what the open door policies are, they're not so open door. And right. you know, you've got this guy sticking this guy and I mean, everybody's doing everything but what they need to be. Yeah. And, or they've got caught up in bad habits or it's bad leadership or whatever. So to your point, a toxic environment especially coming from the top down, if it's allowed uh, to, to, to permeate, can just destroy an organization. 100%. It only takes one. It takes, you know, and all of a sudden, like, well, what is Johnny, you know, every day he leaves at 4.30 and he's telling us he he didn't really like this job. And then you got another guy like, man, I'm been, I'm, why do I have to stay to six if I don't? And all of a sudden, it starts to creep in that culture. Yeah. And as a business owner or leader in any organization, this could be a church. I mean, this could be anything. Uh, it has to be nipped in the head I yeah. mean, right away. Um, you ever have you ever seen read the book Good to Great? Yes, you know, Jim Collins. Jim Collins, yeah. And, and one of the what I, you know, everybody tells you, you know, get the right people on the bus, get the right people off. But what I, I really enjoyed from that, I don't know if you remember this part, it's a different part. It says, um, you have the right people, you can drive the bus anywhere, yeah, 100%. And so, you were talking, you, you, you could go probably, you know, figure out a whole other business with great people. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, why do you think that uh, so many businesses? settles business leaders entrepreneurs or whatever organization settle for mediocrity mediocrity and you know keeping people that that don't really want to be there in the first place lack of vision yeah i think it's lack of vision employers especially the last couple of years just been beat up yeah you true. know i mean we've been hit from a bunch of different directions so many unknowns you know a lot of businesses are uh, taking loans and uh, just to survive through COVID. Oh, and, sure. and then, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is a lot of these loans have personal guarantees on them. <laughs> yeah. And so now your personal assets are tied to them and you got all this stuff going on and it's stressful. And then it's easy to just like clock out like yeah. mentally. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and then, and not be present. And then if you're not present for too long, that's when people, like, People go right. What, what, what were they like? Look like the substitute teacher, you know, is there and hundred percent, right? You're like, dude, they're not paying attention, and we're not, we're they're not focused on the business. 
and you know what happens. I mean, toughest thing about being a leader or a business owner is being consistent. Yes. Even when like family life's going array yes. or whatever, you still got to come in and try to be that same consistent person every single in a, day. In a steadying presence. Yeah. You know, uh, visionary, obviously I think you're a strong visionary. I feel like I've been blessed with that. But if, you know, I, I sometimes look back at my 15 year old younger self and some of the consistency is a little off. Like, you know, I'd, if I got really had a bad week, I'd end up writing an email that came completely off the wrong way. And I, if I could go back in time and talk to that Ryan, not you, but me, this Ryan uh, on the Ryan and Ryan show, uh, I would have said, you know what? It's not worth the battle. Right. It, it needs to be dealt with in person and it needs to you can wait until next week. Yeah. Because the, the the ramifications of something coming off the wrong way and then f- trying to fix it. So listen, you mentioned something about stress. You know, you just said, and you know, people, I had a previous guest talking about entrepreneurship, people, everybody thinks they want to be an entrepreneur and it's not for everybody. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you work more to <laughs> than people. I mean, we, we all do, you know, but let's just talk about stress for the normal person. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're so worried and concerned, you know, we're moving at this rapid pace of, of life and everybody's working around like they just want to go and take this deep breath. And what, what, what might you say to that? I mean, you know, what, what are we gaining by going, man, I'm the most stressed out guy. In the- so I don't have all the answers for sure. sure. Right. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. But what I've learned to do is, um, you know, try to find some peace and quiet every yes. day, whether it's on my ride home i kind of stop listening to music well, smart and just have peace and a little quiet. quiet or on my way to work now i listen to like inspirational speeches and, yeah uh like uh you know inspiring word or whatever and then i also as a business leader am putting a lot more focus on making quicker decisions sure uh because when you're stressed you have decision fatigue and then you delay action and then your team gets frustrated and it's a trickle effect. So I'm really focused on just trying to make quick decisions. And if they're wrong, we learn from them and we keep going. I had someone told me early on, and it goes back to the days of you know, paper. And, you know, and, and I still, they would say that every time you pick up the memo or piece of paper and put it in another pile, then to come back and reread it and put it on, you need to make a decision what you're doing, okay. right? He's like, move forward, punt, Whatever it is, or reconvene in three months, but to continue, and I'm bad about this. Right. Sometimes I'm like, let me look, look at it one more time. Well, you pretty much know, to your point, what you, what pile it needs to go in, and just piling junk up, you just need to get it off the list. Yeah. Well, and we're going to be wrong. I mean, there is no perfect answer to stuff. Right. But there's that, what I always call efficiency and effectiveness, and you can be really effective, but if it takes forever to get something done, that's... Uh, not very efficient. Yeah. You know, or you can be very efficient and not very effective. Yeah, and, and I actually always switch that when I say it, but he, exactly, you can be yeah. really quick and be wrong. Like I have a lot of people yeah. in my life, they work super fast, but they make error after error. Right. On the other hand, I've got people that don't make a mistake, they take forever to do it. Yeah. So like, we bring those together and, and, and we're good. Um, well, what about, we were talking about this uh, a little bit before we went on air. A lot of people, and this has been an age old, age old thing, but especially the, the last probably 27 months, a lot of people I know, I think you do too, they're worried about things that are out of their control. You know, they're they're fretting and looking at things and saying, you know, it's World War Three coming and you know the yeah. you know, gas gonna go to twenty dollars a gallon and you know, there is this ever gonna end and I mean, you know where I have all the answers, but what might be your thoughts on that? I mean, as a business owner, I'm fighting the urge to buy into all of that like everyone right. else, and I'm doubling down on not uh, and, and I'm buying more trucks and I'm hiring more people awesome. and I'm investing more money into stocks that have dropped or, you know, opportunities. And so uh, I've been training myself this way ever since. Actually, you brought the book Good to Great. Yeah. Uh, since I've read that book, it's really trained me in my mind uh, to like when the world's saying one thing. Look, 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 the look at the way. opportunities and it's all it's not all that bad. And you can capitalize on you know, I know it may sound bad in a time of recession or hard times, but it's the reverse, right? Well, I so. always say, I always say this. I said this a lot. Speaking you know, behind every obstacle lies an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Behind every problem lies a solution. And people are like, oh, we can't do that." Well, somebody can. Yeah, they're there. I don't know exactly the answer, but I'll remember Ryan being down, and remember when the housing crash, um, whatever, oh eight, oh nine, something like that. And I was down near the beach in Florida, in an area I love, and. I was telling a friend of mine at that time, if we would have had a ton of cash, mm-hmm. cash, cash, man, it was 50 cents on the dollar. Now's the time. And, and it would be worth three times. Yeah. I mean, 
but but exactly, we're get, it's another time going through. Yeah. So you know, listening to as you had said in, uh, when you were on a previous episode, putting good people around you, people that also believe in, hey, if I believe in myself and my people, I mean, I can't uh, quit or not double down because then I'm I'm not really even following my own what I say. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of people that do. They run around scared. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put all my stuff and it's like biblical, you know, yeah. put the talents in the. Sand yep. and do nothing with them, yep. and you're gonna you're gonna get what zero percent triple, percent. <laughs> yep. triple yeah exactly trying to you're gonna triple down yeah but it, it, it is important and I think out there um, we we were talking about before on the in the uh, earlier show um, you know people I think some people work because you know it's just they just need a paycheck and then there's people that um you know they 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 say to me you know hey i want to be an entrepreneur cuz then you know i can play golf any day i want and i'm like oh whoa, whoa, time out <laughs> yeah. i mean that's so so what might we say to you know when people say i have a passion to do xyz what might be some wise counsel before they just jump into something uh to is it to talk to some people that might have wisdom or what i mean so they think through what they're doing and don't I mean are they passion. really going to listen no nah, probably not i don't know yeah, like not. i'm a hardcore entrepreneur and if i wanted to jump i'm yeah, not going to listen so i mean, I mean, I mean in you and a I lot of cases advice, probably the best worst worst <laughs> right. i mean we're probably, probably going to tune this part probably of the show. shouldn't listen to us <laughs> yeah, yeah, but right. i mean for me i'm an all or nothing type of guy so i say jump on in and figure you know, the parachute out as you, you fall figure the parachute yeah. take the shirt off you, make it a parachute you'll see us in las vegas in about 8 weeks just just look your local list. And, no, I, I get it. I mean, so I mean, you don't know unless you try. I'd rather I'd rather live uh, knowing that I tried and failed than live in regret. And that's great. I uh, I don't mind failure. Like if you're not failing, I don't think you're trying. And you know, I I'm a big believer in dream big, do big. I tell my kids that when I tuck them in, I'm like dream big, and then they tell me uh, do big. And I got that you, from but Baby But if you Stanley. don't, like I was using that email, if you don't f- face failure. How do you grow? You right. can't. I mean, if, if everything's just safe, I mean, I, I couldn't have, I want to tell somebody that experience of when I've shot myself in the foot over and over. Well, if you learn from it, you grow. Mm-hmm. If you don't learn from it, you're just kind of dumb, yeah. you know? And, um, but I, 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 it's almost like you, 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 you fall for, you move forward by failing forward because you, you're gonna, it's like baseball, you know, Chipper Jones is one of the greatest hitters ever. And he was one for three, you know, for his whole career. Yeah. And that was excellent. Yep. And and so when we have a vision for something, I mean, you gotta kinda be like the one of the great books have you know, cut your cut your chips and you gotta be all in so there's no running back to okay, I actually don't want to do this, got a little scary. Yep. Head first. At first. I mean you ha- you know you have to be all in because um that's just the way that's just the way it is. But so, have a plan. Yeah, no, you gotta have a plan. Ideally the parachute. Um, <laughs> we, we want, we want if you to, don't have a parachute and a shirt will work uh, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you jump off a ship, <laughs> life jacket's always recommended, <laughs> right. right? You know, but uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, I think with, with people and the pace of life and um, terms of, um, uh, you know, all, all the stuff they're trying to, to balance and, you know, come to kind of our final minute here. Give them, give them just what you would say. If it just, you know, is it take a deep breath? Is it just realize a lot of things we're worried about don't matter? I mean, what might we say? Yeah, I mean, slow down, figure <laughs> out what's important to you and prioritize and be intentional. Yeah. I think there's so many people that are walking around like my daughter right now, right? Just yeah, through life. Yeah. And it's so missing, easy missing. to check oh, it's out. Funny. It's so easy to check out. So, um, you know, there's so many good opportunities, so many nice people you could talk to in the line at the grocery store, you know, just bring a smile, to just people's be face. intentional smile. Like we didn't see smiles no, for a year. So just being that smile and, and being that caring person to ask, how are you? Yeah. And, and we all need that. So it's, yep. uh, well, folks, we had uh, part two today again. Ryan, appreciate you, brother. Yeah, man. Uh, Ryan, Lucia, watch both episodes. And folks, thanks for tuning in to another Art Town Show. We'll see you next time.